Overseas today and in the Persian Gulf, at least one crewman was killed when the Iraqi Air Force fired an Exocet missile at a Greek-owned tanker which was ferrying oil for Iran. At the same time, U.S. forces are escorting four Kuwaiti tankers through the Gulf, a potentially more dangerous trip following last week's discovery that Iran may have American Stinger surface-to-air missiles. Here's ABC's John McCrethy. U.S. helicopter pilots in the Persian Gulf have been given permission to shoot more quickly if an Iranian vessel shows even the slightest hostile intent. Officials acknowledge this could increase the number of clashes between U.S. and Iranian forces in the weeks ahead. But they say now that Iran appears to have U.S.-made Stinger anti-aircraft missiles, American helicopters are at much greater risk. These are the first pictures of the Iranian small boats that allegedly fired upon U.S. helicopters last week, prompting American retaliation. The boats were later taken aboard U.S. ships where Stinger packaging and batteries were found. This has set off a rushed investigation by the Pentagon and CIA to find out how Iran got the missiles. The Stinger, which is made in the United States for the U.S. Army, is feared because of its track record in Afghanistan. The U.S.-backed Mujahideen is shooting down a Soviet aircraft once every 36 hours on average. Most of those kills are attributed to the Stinger. Outside of Western Europe, the U.S. has only provided these shoulder launch missiles to three places, Saudi Arabia and to the U.S.-backed rebels in Angola and Afghanistan. The Stinger has not been more widely distributed for fear it would fall into the wrong hands. It appears that has now happened, forcing the U.S. to defend itself against its own weapon. John McQuethy, ABC News, the State Department. Still overseas today, thousands of Indian troops are fighting militant Tamil rebels in the northern Sri Lankan city of Jaffna. The Indian troops are trying to enforce a ceasefire in Sri Lanka, a ceasefire which collapsed last week when the rebels killed more than 200 people in apparent revenge for the suicide deaths of 13 Tamils in government custody. A Japanese researcher has won the Nobel Prize for Medicine, Susumu Tonagawa, who does his research at MIT, was given the prize for helping to explain how the body is able to manufacture millions of different antibodies to fight disease. His work could be valuable to other researchers working with vaccines and could also make organ transplants safer. We have an unusual report tonight about a prison in Massachusetts. Unusual because, A, the prison is also a place where Massachusetts puts people who should be in hospitals, and B, it is unusual for reporters to have real access with their television cameras. The report by Joe Bergantino, with the help of our Boston affiliate, is a reminder of what can happen when man really doesn't care enough for his fellow man. In a remote corner of Massachusetts, there is a place called Bridgewater. I want to get out of here so bad I can't see straight. I'm in here because I killed the devil. I'm almighty and all powerful and I'm all good, you know. Inside these walls are convicted criminals who have been deemed deranged and violent. Did I kill my grandmother? I killed my grandmother. Inside these walls also live the violent mentally ill whose only crime is their sickness. I don't have a criminal history or nothing, and I don't harm myself. You know, I'm not like that. But sometimes I've been here so long, I, you know, I don't know if they think I like it here. The state calls Bridgewater a hospital, but it is really a prison, one of the last remaining prisons in this country for the mentally ill. Bridgewater historically has been in the position of being the place where people are sent to be forgotten and sent to be warehoused, and sent uh, to be out of the public view, and in some sense, to be the place where you, you can't hear them screaming. In the 1960s, filmmaker Frederick Wiseman captured the screams, the neglect, and the abuse of inmates here. But the state of Massachusetts, to this day, bans Wiseman and his company from showing this documentary to the public. To protect the privacy of inmates, says the state, to hide the truth, say the critics. 20 years later, the bricks and mortar of Bridgewater have changed, but charges of neglect still linger. In this state that boasts of a booming economy and progressive social policies, Bridgewater is its dirty little secret. Understaffed, underfunded, a source of shame. To have uh, suicides happening around you has to make you question what's going on. <laughs> 
This year alone, five inmates have died. Three committed suicide in rooms where they were supposed to be closely monitored. Some of the mentally ill here are still kept in seclusion. The sickest languish in cells with no more than a hole in the floor for a toilet. Medication! Beyond medication, there is little or no treatment at Bridgewater. Inmates outnumber medical staff 10 to 1. To fill the void, Jimmy Slavin, who killed his infant child, is devising his own therapy. He is blinding himself by deliberately staring into the sun. I'm a little scared about it because I know all I'm not going to see anymore. But I feel better about it because I can't hurt anymore. If I can't see, I can't hurt anybody. I want you to strip down, keep your hands out of your pockets. Until WCVB-TV, the ABC affiliate station in Boston, gained special unlimited access to Bridgewater and aired these pictures, each new inmate was routinely strip searched in public. If they have any little bit of mind left, it surely has to be gone from what they've been through in that place. Thank you for the opportunity in Massachusetts, Bridgewater is now a public scandal. Outraged state Johnson legislators are blaming the administration of Governor Michael Dukakis, a Democratic presidential candidate, for not doing enough. The governor's top department heads are confessing they made a mistake. There is a promise to spend more money here, up to $3 million, a promise to beef up staff and separate the mentally ill from the criminally insane. But for now, it is just a promise, one that could take years to fulfill. Joe Bergantino, ABC News, Bridgewater, Massachusetts. We'll be back in just a moment.